fans fail. Well, but what are the symptoms of fan failure and the sources of fan failure? Let's talk to Wes at the bench. Wes, good to see you again. You too, Zach. It's always great to be at the bench with you, sir. <laughs> All right. It's great to be here. You know, it's uh, it's always fun to uh, work with the hardware and help people out if I can. Yeah, and you do help people out, too, I must say. Okay, so I come to you with, with this issue here. The symptoms and the sources of fan failure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the symptoms of fan failure. Sure. What are we looking at? Well, um, overheating. Mm -hmm. You know, really, um, without visual inspection, dust buildup component failure, fan failure in this, uh, in this uh, case, uh, they will manifest themselves in the same symptoms. And that usually, uh, you know, uh, manifests itself in overheating in the system itself. Uh, maybe you've uh, put your hand on the case, uh, you know, the, de the desktop case, and you're like, wow, that's, that, that's kind of hot. I was frying an egg on mine the other day. <laughs> okay, well, you know, it's uh, probably because you left it out at, in the Florida sun <laughs> at noon. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that is uh, definitely one of the telltale signs of the fact that it's getting, it's getting hot. It's, it's starting to overheat, those random system uh, reboots, if it gets too hot. Uh, the other thing, too, is a lot of noise. And the reason I say mm. that is because um, your firmware platform, when you have multiple system fans and, uh, and a CPU fan in your, uh, your system unit, what I mean by that, jargon aside, is just collectively, what is the box that I can walk away with and I plug everything into? That's your system unit. When you have multiple uh, fans, uh, then they kind of work in tandem. They work together. Um, we've seen, uh, when we uh, looked at the dust uh, buildup episode, we've seen that heat sink that's a big block lovely. of metal. And we'll, we'll look at it again uh, for sure here. Uh, but uh, that's part of your cooling system. And then there's a fan that it's uh, attached to that heat sink. And what it does is as that block of metal absorbs or dissipates, pulls that heat from the CPU into itself, uh, then the fan is supposed to blow that hot air out and then in combination with the system fans, the case fans, mm -hmm. they're supposed to, st they're strategically positioned with the vents to pull cool air into the case, and then as the heat gets generated in the case, the exhaust fan is supposed to push or pull, depending on how your, you know, what your frame of reference is, is supposed to basically exhaust that hot air out of the back of the case. And if one of those fans fails, then what um, can happen is your firmware uh, has uh, the ability to adjust the voltages. Uh, not all fans, uh, but the fans a lot of times that are connected directly to the motherboard, your firmware, your BIOS, UEFI, more modern firmware platform, will look at that or will detect that through a thermal temperature sensor and say, wait a second, something's going on here. Let's apply more voltage to the uh, fan and let's start to speed it up. And that manifests itself into noise. If you've ever had a, a computer that's overheating and you've ever heard that those fans, it sounds like a helicopter lifting mm -hmm. off. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, sounds like a Cuisinart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have to be fair, though, because that, it could be dust. Right. Um, but in this case, we're just tackling it from the standpoint that one of the fans has failed so that all the other fans have to compensate to make up for you know, the loss of uh, air that's being pulled or pushed by the fan that's failed. So you have, if you have multiple fans in your PC, and mm -hmm. most people do, mm -hmm. one fan goes bad, mm -hmm. You, you shouldn't just think, well, it'll be fine because the other fans are working. Well, it, it, it depends on how your case is built. Um, and what I mean by that is when I built one of, one of the builds that I did, um, I had uh, like three or four case fans, which meant um, I know I had one in the front, one in the back. I had four, two sidewall, uh, two on the sides as well as the CPU fan. So in that case, if it's one of the smaller, let's say, 80 millimeter fans and it fails, um, then you're probably okay for a little bit, at least enough to uh, definitely um, uh, replace it. Yeah, run to the store and buy another one. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely get, 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 on, get, yeah, get on the get phone, on get on the line, get, get you on. one uh, coming in. Uh, and that's the great thing about having redundant fans. Mm -hmm. If one fails, the others can compensate for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, again, sometimes the BIOS will push more uh, voltage to them and it'll make them a little bit louder. However, Keep in mind that also shortens their life too, because if yes. one's if, if one's going faster, then the bearings are getting worn. Again, it's a moving part. Uh, any kind of mechanical moving part is uh, bound to fail. So what you can do is you can overtax the other fans, and then slowly the, the, they they can start to fail. However, I will tell you that for the most part, fans do a really good job, and a lot of times they don't fail. But you never say never, because I have seen some that have just stopped working. And that's why we're talking about it right yes. now. So what are the causes of fan failure? Well, the causes, there's a couple of things. Uh, one of the things could be just outright the fan has failed itself. Uh, you know, it, that happens. Another thing could be uh, loose connections. 
Uh, and if it's a loose connection, then what's going to happen is that if it's not firmly seated on the motherboard, maybe you've upgraded a component, maybe you've changed a component, then it's not registering in the BIOS, and the BIOS can't see it. So the BIOS, according to its perspective, says, it's not here, something's wrong. Let me show you what I mean. Okay. Uh, we pulled up the BIOS interface here and mm -hmm. you can kind of see, uh, you'll have to check with your manufacturer on how you get into the BIOS interface. What I really like uh, about this uh, BIOS interface uh, here, this is an AMI BIOS. And again, the brand of the motherboard is by Gigabyte. Uh, and this is in their easy mode, but you can see that we have three system fans. Yeah, three, we've well, we got a CPU fan and two system fans, but mm -hmm. notice that this, uh, this fourth fan, all right, this is what it would look like if the fan has failed mm -hmm. and it's not being seen, or if there's a loose connection. Oh, you, connection. you forced that to... Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, there, there, there is no... Let, let's just, in full disclosure here, transparency, there isn't a fan currently connected oh, to okay. this, this header on the motherboard, and that's what it would look like. Now, if a fan is connected to the motherboard, there are other things, uh, other symptoms as well that I wanted to show you here. So if we click on any one of these fans, it takes us into this nice little graph, and it shows you this uh, that PWM. Just it stands for pulse width pulse width modulation. Mm -hmm. Zach, that's just a fancy term for hey, we hit it with more voltage and look at the performance. It right. makes it run faster, right? Uh, and we can see that we could set uh, speed fan controls and stuff. We could uh, you know fan uh, fan stop if we want but look at this one right here the fan fail warning I don't have this enabled and honestly I'm not gonna I'm not gonna enable this on a fan that doesn't exist because if it's not connected then according to the BIOS it says hey if that fan isn't detected, you told me that I should let you know, and it'll set off an audible alarm. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it will. But that's another sign that we can see. When you see the CPU voltages, mm -hmm. these CPU voltage and the system temp, mm -hmm. uh, they're all within the tolerances here. Your PCH, that's what's known as the platform controller hub. It's like another processor that's really built into the board. I think of it as like the traffic controller mm -hmm. uh, at an airport. It mm -hmm. basically monitors and controls the exchange of communications across the mother board it can get fairly hot but it's well within its operational range here and if we were out of the tolerance zone or the, the tolerances it would indicate that here it, it would it okay. would uh, so for instance your VRM MOS uh, that's again fancy bunch of alphabet soup here that's voltage regulator module uh -huh. what that means is that uh, these uh, this is a crucial set of capacitors that are on semi-oxide metal metal semi-oxide or excuse me hold, hold on metal oxide semiconductors is what MOS stands go. for uh, but they, it's uh, some conductors on, on the motherboard that are, uh, they make sure that the power uh, is where it needs to be. And because power is going through it and they're regulating the power, they can get very hot too. So if you start to see these temperatures rise, especially in relation to the fact that a CPU fan is not, isn't being seen, then we know we've got an issue. And at mm -hmm. this point, what we need to do is we need to identify what the failed fan is, uh, and then we need to go ahead and replace it. Well, then that comes to our last point, which is, what is the solution? Well, the solution in this case Replace is, it. Uh, yeah, it really is. Uh, we, we've seen yeah. part of the solution here is, yeah. is looking at uh, what we did and looking at the BIOS and finding out, hey, we're not seeing the fan and those temperature ranges are out of their normal operating uh, values. Now, operational values are going to vary from motherboard to motherboard, from CPU to CPU, from the case to case. It is not, uh, you, you know, in, name, in, in the words of one of the other agitators here at IT Pro TV, this isn't a one size fits all, it's a one size fits one. So check on the vendor mm -hmm. manufacturer and check out what the operating specifications are. But uh, I, I, I guess what we'll go ahead and do is uh, if we've identified the fan that's failed, what do you say we go ahead and show you how to replace the fan? I think that'd be great. All right, so then TV what, time out, maybe. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and we'll clear off our keyboards here. We'll turn our computer off. We'll mm -hmm. put it up on the bench. And what do you say we come back? We'll do a little bit of a component replacement. Let's go. And we're back. That's right. So now we're talking about the solution to our fan failure. That's right. So what we uh, need to do is identify mm -hmm. the fan that's failed. In this case, I'm going to show you the rear system fan. One of the system fans okay. has failed. It's this one right here. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and replace it. You can see that we have our other fan here. And one of the things I would mention is just pay attention to your fans here because they'll tell you with little arrows on them, and you can just barely see that yeah, arrow I can see right that. there. Yep. It lets you know the direction, the rotational spin of the fan, and the direction that it pulls or pushes the air. In this case, this arrow is pointing that way, and it's letting me know that this is going to push air this way. So in this case, mm -hmm. um, air is coming in from the front, and it's going to go out the back. So I need to make sure that the arrow, the directional arrow, is actually facing back. So 
what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to remove this fan and I've kind of gone ahead and I've backed off the bolts a little bit there yep. but if we could take uh, a view here you can see we've got four mounting positions mm -hmm. here four little screws and this one uh, I went ahead and already took out ahead of time right and to do this it's, it's fairly easy it's just a matter of backing these screws out and got to be careful because I know what'll happen with me I'm I'm, I'm so graceful that <laughs> we'll end up losing one of these and it'll uh, it'll be on the other side of the yeah, studio went to before the school we're for done. The graceful <laughs> that's right that's right uh, it compensates for being born with two left hand or two two left hands if you so will. Wes if you put the fan in let's see mm -hmm. the other way so sure. it's not blowing out this way it's blowing back in that way that would be not a good that'd thing. be a problem yeah, yeah because yeah. what's happening is then you're just you're pulling cool air in from both sides right but the heat it's heating up and it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that would cause uh, thermal damage, that right. would cause an overheating issue. So which, you know, by association, you could say that could be the issue too, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you're if you're replacing one of these mm -hmm. and you replace them uh, wrong. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and uh, if we uh, look overhead here, I'm gonna, okay. I'm just gonna pull this fan just to the side here. But then if we zoom in, you're gonna notice, and I can give us a little bit more space here. And let me grab my little pointer and make it a little bit easier to see. There's actually a small fan header right there. Right. And that, the power cord is right there. And basically what I did is I just disconnect this off and you pull this out. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really it. We're gonna pull this fan out and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the next fan uh, and we're gonna basically put it in its place. Now mm -hmm. I will say some of the things that I'm gonna do off camera here uh, is a little bit of cable management okay. because of the fact that this fan has such a long cable it and it's really cable, close, yeah. uh, what I'll end up doing is I'll end up making sure that this is routed uh, properly and then I'll take some of this excess and mm. uh, kind of tie it down with uh, with the uh, little zip ties. Because you even want the, that cable to get caught in the fan blade. Yeah, if the fan, if it's not that, if the cable's not quite as long as this one is, mm -hmm. there's been times where I've done little knots like this and what it'll do is it'll take some of the excess. That's not going to work in, in this case here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to position this and again remembering that this fan the needs arrows. to blow out of the back of the case. Yeah. And if we look overhead here real quick, I'll show you that the one thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that you'll see that the cable itself is down here towards the bottom. And that is going to help us snug this and also keep sure, you can see that cable there. Mm -hmm. I want it closer to where the system header is uh, or the fan header is, that little four pins right there. So I want this cable closer to that, uh, you know, just again for proper routing techniques. And then if we look at the tech cam, it's really just gonna be lining up these bolts and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, get them started here. And then what we'll do is, once we've got these started, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, lock them down. Uh, again, this really, just pay attention to your motherboard manufacturer, mm -hmm, the case mm -hmm. manufacturer here uh, again, and just kind of kind of be patient with it. Uh, you can see they're kind of falling out on me here. But uh, that... <laughs> You're working at a strange angle. I was going to say, that's, that's kind of par for the course here, though. Uh, so I'll go ahead and tell you what, we'll get, we'll get these started here and make sure that they don't fall out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're installing the, uh, the screws for the first time, because this is a plastic, you might see that it, because um, they're, for the most part, they're universal. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you some things that uh, sometimes happen is they don't like to thread really easy. Uh, make sure that you're not cross-threading them. Sometimes you'll see that um, you'll have little plastic shavings and stuff. Yeah, that's if you're a, not yeah. if, if you're not cross-threading, it's okay. This uh, you can kind of hear this one uh, is more like a ratchet set. This is part of my Dynex uh, kit, mm -hmm. so you can kind of absolutely love this little thing, especially when you need to turn these um, and you need to do a lot of this. Mm -hmm. It tight really helps too, yeah. out. Yeah, so. Um, I'm pretty sure you've probably used a screwdriver once or twice, so uh, again, nothing too challenging here. Uh, the main thing to just remember when you're installing these, just make sure that the rotational spin and the direction is appropriate for your case. So right. if, we, if we look out, kind of zoom out a little bit and we look at from the top, uh, essentially that's what we have here. We've got our fan is installed, uh -huh. and then at this point, it's really just taking this four pin header and just plugging that into the little four pin header that mm -hmm. we've seen on the motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna try to wrestle with this and 
Notice that I do have my ESD wrist strap Good. on. Good, yeah, um, nice, smart. I, it, it is very, very important for you to maintain proper protection. I'm gonna set our light off to the side here so that I can get in here, thank you. And we will plug that in. And once that's done, well, you know, our fan is pretty much connected. Now, mm -hmm. at this point, what we need to do is we just, I need to do a little bit of cable, cable management, management on it. Make mm -hmm. sure that, they're, they're, you know, with rotational, uh, you know, moving parts and stuff, you don't want these cables getting caught up in here. Uh, but then it's just a matter of putting your case back together. And like we showed you in the BIOS interface mm -hmm. that we were at, is just making sure that the system's detected it and you got RPMs and there you go. It's as simple as that to replace a system fan. Wonderful. So you've helped us identify the symptoms and the sources of fan failure and what we can do to fix that. That's right. Thanks again, Wes. You're welcome.